Well, tonight at sundown mark the start of Hanukkah this year. Families around the world will gather with loved ones to light menorahs and start their eight day long celebration. To talk a little bit more about the Festival of Lights is Rabbi Israel Zoberman from Temple Lev Tikva in Virginia Beach. Rabbi, thank you for being uh, here Good tonight. to be here on the eve of Hanukkah, which means dedication, commemorating the first recorded struggle on behalf of religious freedom and freedom of conscience and all those freedoms that really have allowed America to prosper. And I uh, think that's good. You're, you're exactly, you took the question right out of my <laughs> mouth here. I've been at it for a long time. <laughs> <laughs> and I mean, that's the biggest thing here is that, you know, especially this year with so much of an unfortunate rise of anti-Semitism across the country, across the world. Why is this Hanukkah so important? Well, Hanukkah celebrates diversity. It celebrates human dignity. It celebrates inclusivity all those ideas and principles that have made America the greatest democracy in the world, the world's leader. And to know that without the lights of Hanukkah, without those freedoms, there will be darkness in the world. Right now, there's enough darkness at home and abroad to really alert us that each candle can dispel so much gloom in the darkness of the world right now. And each of us is a source of light, positive energy. We can make a difference. Sometimes it just takes a smile or a pat on the shoulder. And of course, if you reach out to someone with the gift of either Hanukkah or Christmas coming up, you can make a huge difference. And to understand that at this season of sacred lights, of faiths that share so much, you know, so much we place emphasis on differences. Mm -hmm. This is a season when you can say with a surety, there's so much that unites us, the love of our freedoms that we dare not take for granted. And something we talk about during the shows here on the weekend a lot is the ongoing conflict in Ukraine. You yeah. know, I was I was texting my aunt Breaks back my home. Heart. In I was Breaks texting my, my aunt back home in New Jersey, who's Jewish, wished her a happy Hanukkah, yeah. and she was telling me her descendants come from Ukraine. My mom is hardened too, you're old, yeah. but she really is quite young, given she's <laughs> of advanced age, lives in Israel, a Holocaust survivor yeah. of the old Ukraine, a and uh, you know, I call her every Shabbat evening to wish her Shabbat Shalom, Mom, how you doing? I let her know what's going on. She knows, she greets the papers, and, and you know, it breaks my heart to see what happened in the Ukraine. I was in the Ukraine in 91 with my wife, and I remember those historic sites, uh, Kiev, the capital, and to know that this bombardment, this uncivilized, barbaric attack is taking place in the heart of Europe, so close to the Holocaust that took place 70 some years ago, we should really do whatever we can to defend Ukraine. Mm -hmm. And talk uh, also to touching on, you know, amidst all of this rise of hate, how to stay resilient, how to stay, how to stay positive. You know, what is your, wh how do we do that? Well, that's why we light the menorah that we begin with one light, this is the assistant, and we add on each successive night till it's packed with lights that it takes courage to kindle lights of hope in the darkness of life, darkness of history, but it can be done. We have survived against great odds as a Jewish people. So we have a lesson for humanity. You can endure. You have the light within you mm -hmm. to share with others. So when you move forward with hope, resiliency, and the conviction that each human life as a divine spark, and each of us is a potential messenger of positive change. We have the power to reduce darkness. Really quick before we run out of time here, you, this is also a very special menorah too. I bought, this, I bought this uh, menorah, by the way, called Hanukkiah, Hanukkah the holiday, Hanukkiah the Hanukkah menorah. In fact, the rabbis tell us that after the Syrian and Greek spears were removed from the walls of the temple in Jerusalem, they were converted into a menorah, teaching us that our duty is to turn, convert instruments of war into instruments of peace. I found this menorah in the old city of Jerusalem in the 1990s, following the events of, at the time, the peace pass in the yeah. Middle East. I got so excited, and it was an Arab store, and I said, to commemorate the peace that yeah. is coming, it's still, on the way, but we met Pargis, great Pargis, yeah. the Abraham Accords recently. I bought it. In fact, this is the first Hanukkah where I actually am going to use it. So well, it's going great. to lose some of its beautiful luster right well, now. Thank you. 
And you know, the menorah tells us always, yeah. dignity, human dignity and God's divinity well, thank are you. one and inseparable. Thank you for speaking with us tonight. Thank you for bringing I have it. more to share, that's for the next review. <laughs> <laughs> thank you, Rabbi. And thank you. Happy Hanukkah to everybody at home. And in a week from now, Merry Christmas to anybody. And don't go away. We'll have another check of your Super Doppler 10 forecast and the sports wrap all coming up. Shalom.